Mm-hmm. I was in a place of that fire burning inside that just, you know, you just want to create. I love acting because I, I always feel like I can go deeper in you while building characters. You're going to really drop your Beautiful jaw. Melanin goddess that's before me. Hello. Coming up on another act, I talk with Jamie Hector. You know him as Batty Marlo Stansfield from HBO's The Wire. He's currently closing out the final season of Amazon Prime's Bosch, but he's preparing to head back to Baltimore to work with the same team that brought us The Wire, but this time he's a detective. Jamie, viewers have been absolutely captivated by Bosch and your character, uh, Detective Jerry Edgar, of course, is a fan favorite. But now it's all coming to an end. Why is now the right time to end this story and this journey that you guys have taken us on for the past uh, seven seasons, I think it is? Well, now is the right time for it to end because Bosch, he's coming to a crossroads, right, with his career and what's mm-hmm. happening with um, law enforcement and the justice system. And Jerry Edgar is dealing with conflicts in his career also. And overall, uh, the Michael Conley novels are transitioning into a spinoff. Right now, during these times, it's like we're an anomaly, right? It's not 20 shows that go seven seasons. Yeah. So yeah. we're it's just the right time to actually leave while the mic is still hot, while we're still looking good. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the beginning a little bit. What was it about this series and this story? Jerry Edgar spoke to me in a different way. He was a law enforcement officer, but he was also one that was really grounded in his um, community. So I enjoyed that. And I wanted to tell a story that was opposite from the story that I told on um, The Wire. I played mm-hmm. one character. I wanted to actually try to tangle in a different area. Mm-hmm. Something a little challenging, something different, you know, something that causes me to do a little, a little more research. So you played Marlo Stansfeld on The Wire and you played him probably a little too well. Was it challenging? <laughs> was it challenging to get this industry to see you beyond Marlo or, or was it that Marlo was always walking into the room first? What was that experience like for you? It was challenging, you know, it was challenging. I, that's the reason why a lot of times in my past um, interviews, you would always hear me refer to the fact that I'm a trained actor, right? I was constantly, and it's not something that I should have to do. You know, when you're, you're playing a role like that, you know, people assume that they just pluck you off or, from anywhere and just had you come and read lines, right? That you didn't have to prepare. So because it was challenging, I made sure that when I, I stepped into the room, I was fully prepared and that I got a chance to have a conversation with the creators and really talk about crafting, right? Mm-hmm. Really ask questions, really understand the need, you know, and really build from that perspective. So so yeah. what was it that that kept you in the game, but also that let you know that there would be at some point light at the end of whatever types of scripts that you, the same types of scripts I would imagine yeah. that you were probably getting, you know, across your desk. Like, like tell me about that experience because saying no, uh, which is yeah. a complete sentence is, mm-hmm. is really is really difficult, I think, especially when you are a freelance artist. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, it's a couple of things, right? It's one purpose, right? Knowing the stories that you want to tell, knowing the, how it's going to affect people, right? Around the world, how we're going to be seen to the team that you have as well. And if you can clearly express what you wanna do and the stories that you wanna tell, mm-hmm. for me, that plays a huge part in, in having clarity and being able to say no to that one because that's just basically gonna hinder where I'm trying to go. It was very difficult in the beginning because it's difficult for every actor, right? Because we're trying to create, we just wanna be, we wanna be in the game. And once you get in the game, then it's time. <laughs> and, uh, you know? and it's funny because I didn't even describe him as a drug kingpin. I'm also describing him as a, you know, a businessman for many reasons, right? So to okay. not approach him in that way. But I'm going back to Baltimore, working with the same team, having an opportunity to actually create something incredible for the people as a homicide detective. And, you know, to be directed and to, again, say the words and to live the life of the people that created this, this, this project that actually put me on a stage, right? Mm-hmm. Um, meaning... Of the wire and having a chance to do it again is going to be a lot of fun. You know, there's something so powerful, I think, um, in 2021, being a Black man playing a police officer, especially because you think about all the conversations that we're having, but it also feels 
like a form of, of activism inside of Hollywood. You know, that you get a mm -hmm. chance to shape what this character is like, looks like, and you get to, in some ways, like affect how the world views people who look like us. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what made this role right for you? And if that was something that you were thinking about when you, when you said yes to working on this project. What made this role right for me is um, I got a call from the executive mm -hmm. producer mm -hmm. and we had a conversation about not just the character, but the story overall and how important it's going to be mm -hmm. for people to see it. That's having a conversation on police reform mm -hmm. that off the heels of George Floyd and so many others that were affected by law enforcement, right? And, mm -hmm. and what we can do to change it. And to see it clearly right in front of your face coming out of Baltimore, Maryland, an opportunity to see that it goes way beyond the character. And first, my first allegiance is to the character, but that story, once you get a chance to lay eyes on, it's going to be unbelievable to you. You're going to really drop your jaw, even though we know sometimes once we see it and in your eye in front of your face, then it, it, it'll blow you away. I'm sure of it. Where were you in your career when you first started thinking about a career other than just being, you know, an actor, other than just being front-facing talent? Like, what were you seeing or what were you not seeing that made you say, this is probably something I should, I should also take up and do too? Where was I? I was um, in a place of that fire burning inside that just, you know, you just want to create. I love acting because I, I always feel like I can go deeper. And I feel like that for all the other artists that I see as well. But when it comes down to this other area of creating, directing, writing, producing, et cetera, mm. it's just a natural um, progression. It's just mm. something that must be done. Speaking of not being just an actor, you're doing even more amazing work off the screen. You have this nonprofit organization called Moving Mountains Incorporated. At, at what point did you, did you create this uh, nonprofit? And tell me a little bit about it. I created it in 2007. So my thing was create a theater company that provides training and a platform to understand the business and how to pursue it to make it a little easier for youngsters in the community that might not be able to go and train at a, at a conservatory like I did and like so many of my other friends. So it's Moving Mountains Theatre Company, started in 2007. We developed skills, talents, and abilities in the arts and youth while building character, right? We understand really that there's a lot happening in the community. Mm -hmm. And the parents have a vision, right, for their children. Like, okay, I want my child to go in this direction. But sometimes it gets difficult. So we just want to be a kickstand. We have over 20 SAG actors, over five or 10 consistently working series regular actors. And then so many of them entering into college, purchased Buffalo, um, pursuing this career, understanding it, coming back and teaching and working with the organization. Mm -hmm. So we're doing what we set out to do. Jamie, this has been a delight. Thank you so much for, uh, for sitting down with me today and chatting. You're and welcome. thanks for all the good you're putting out there. Continued success. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh -huh.